often times you have been tasked with doing the source code review and uh, like you know i've seen many people struggling okay where do i start how do i start because code review is very tedious and i don't think so anyone these days do like a manual code review so most of us like will rely on the tools like snick maybe check marks and like you know there are just so many out there so we we'll rely on that but there are some components which you should review the code like where we sh- you should be focusing on the code and manually reviewing it otherwise those bugs are very hard to capture uh, by the automated so in this episode i'm going to show you like okay what are the people and and what's the process like what are the steps that you can get started if you ever need to do a code review or if you ever like to do a code review and get like you know a more experience in that what are the things you should be focusing on so hopefully this is like you know a, a good guide for everyone uh, in the security uh, who are also focusing on like the tools uh, saas tools as well as manual code review if you like this episode free content please hit the like button it just it's just going to take like one second to do it and subscribe for the weekly episodes started uh, now the first question is uh, whom do you need to get started with the code review so first of all you need to get a buy in uh, from developers because they know the code better than anyone else architects because they know the architecture uh, of the like you know the application or or product that, whatever you are looking at better than anyone else and then you need subject matter experts and when i say subject matter expert is uh, there are in many organization especially large one uh, the authentication is very centralized authorization is central module across many applications and they take care of that authentication authorization so that's where you need to get in touch with this smes and understand uh, this like you know uh, critical components of the application because you are not going to review everything manually uh, we discussed that right so Uh, there are only few components which you want to discuss or review manually so that's where this sme is going to help you out so that's uh, that's one now where do you focus uh, like you know where do you start so uh, you obviously want to start when you discuss with this smes architecture and developers they all have their own perspective uh one person will say uh, x is more important from their perspective architect would say something else sme would say something else you need to collect all of this and then create like you know from your experience from your expertise define what the high risk area is and then you might also get a chance to look at the threat model for that so once you have that then also make sure when you are when you are chatting with the developers tell them like if you are making changes to any of this area uh, like you know let us know as a security reviewer you should be reviewing the code because uh, let's say authentication is working fine today but after an, in the next release someone made changes to the authentication and now it is broken so you want to make sure this high risk areas are definitely reviewed and then when whenever you are reviewing the code whenever you find something uh, interesting make sure you you also update the threat model so it's easier when you do the next time or someone else is doing the code review instead of you so let's take the risk based ap- approach when i say risk based first you want to find out okay which of these features or components are going to be internet uh, internet accessible uh, like you know maybe login screen is something which everyone in the world will be able to see if your application is on the internet but other features which is behind the internet uh, behind the login screen will not be accessible so it has like you know uh, limited exposure it still has high exposure if the authentication is broken of course but otherwise it has limited exposure so you want to focus on the first like you know what are the internet accessible pages or features next you want to see what is the impact the impact differs from like you know component to component and i hate to go back to the same example but suppose like you know your your password is compromised then that has a huge impact on your customer uh, let's say you are not using the proper hashing or whatever the scenario is uh, salt and pepper technique is not working as expected so then your that impact will have like you know a very a very huge on the customers versus if there are like you know somebody is able to do the html injection or or some 
uh, some they wrote some test cases and it's not uh, it ha it is vulnerable that's fine it only has access to the test data so we don't we don't anticipate like you know m much impact so so see which one is the high risk uh, area uh, from this this methods and sometimes you also have like you know uh, compliance requirement uh, depending on which country and and where this product is going to be hosted and and used but as per the gdpr for example uh, collected data must be stored to a given database in a certain location now when you're doing the code review you want to make sure like this code this data cannot go beyond like you know europe region for instance or sometimes there is a requirement that it must like you know when when customer says i want to delete my data or i delete i want to delete my account then that deletion should go through and delete every customer data from all the database so these are some of the compliance checks that you also want to review manually i don't think so any tool saas tool would cover all of this they don't even have knowledge on like you know all these requirements so they are uh, they cover like 70 80% of the task but 20% we have to do it manually and that is where uh, like you know this this guide will be helpful so how do you get started uh, first of all uh, you want to understand what the application features are business logic this is similar uh, i think what i said in the threat model as well so when you do threat model you want to understand the same thing then you want to understand the context or the sensitivity of the data like maybe some data is sensitive some data is not some data is classified some are not so you want to understand like which component is handling the data and everything then you want to understand programming language because you might not be aware or master in all the programming languages that the code has written there there's, there there will be like lot of like you know libraries there will be lot of uh, front end back end code so uh, maybe different framework so you want to collect all the languages this will also help you if you are running the sas scanner because not all the scanners are good at all the languages user roles and access right this is also critical for access control authorization you want to understand what are the user roles uh, which are defined and and like you know what permissions they get so when you are reviewing maybe you can review the the like you know sample of the code you take one user for example like you know admin and see okay uh, is admin able to do xyz activities as defined or they can there is also a way that they can do like you know some super admin kind of activities then you want to find out if it's a web mobile or desktop application a uh, thick client thin client right that will differ a lot if you are using the mobile applications then you also want to talk about like see how the code obfuscation is done etc because that's very critical to the mobile applications while web it is not so much so you want to uh, your your uh, like you know your test cases would differ from what kind of application that is then you also want to see the like you know design flow of application because when you are reviewing the code if you don't know the dis uh, the flow of the data you will get lost in the code and then lastly we as we discussed like you know company standard and guidelines that apply so if your company guidance like the specific policy that all the tools or all the application must have 16 character of password right let's say that's a policy so you want to ask the smes like are there any such policy and if so you want to find the evidence in the code if that policy is are met or not so this is another thing you want to uh, you want to check off like when you want to get started with the code review now when is the good time to perform the review uh, i think most likely um, from my my perspective it's always good to do it in the pre commit before it like you know goes to the master branch and and like you know available to everyone you want to find all the security uh, uh, vulnerabilities before you commit so that's the best place sometimes uh, it doesn't work that way uh, especially with the startups like they don't have that much time to uh, like you know wait for the security approval so then you do the like post commit but then there is also like an incident and you want to find out the root cause then you definitely want to do the code audit so then uh, let's see uh, for the first step like you know you want to I, i told you like this is the information you need to gather so how do you gather all this information so first step you can do is you can you can just like you know sign up ask someone to sign up for like a task credential and you just walk through application yourself this will give you a lot of information you can read through uh, the documentation uh, of the product then you can uh, like you know you can download the source code and see how the structures and code base and libraries are structured then you want to sit with the architect 
which we discussed in the first slide uh, you uh, because that will give you like you know uh, understand the threat like what's in the trust boundary what's outside of trust boundary which component is there uh, which component is coded in which library etc then you will understand the attack stack you will understand how the deployment works whether you should be able to do it in the pre-commit or post-commit uh, based on their sprint and agile methodology yeah, you'll be able to figure that out and then you can see all the users and data uh, that's stored in the different components and and hopefully if you if they have a sequence diagram for critical use cases uh, make sure you ask them uh, that will help you immensely to understand how each components are being used in the application now you gather all the information and now you are all ready to start of course this this like you know up till this steps it sounds easy but it's not uh, it's a lot of information you have to organize a lot of things so but you, you will get get through it right like as and when you do more code review you will get to it so then time for action so what are the first of all uh, download and, and like you know create a checklist for what are the things that you're gonna do in the code review you do not want to do 100 things you do not want to check for 100 items only the difference between what scanners are not not covered or maybe the scanner you have does not support certain programming language so you want to cover that so make sure you you define that in the checklist you mark like you know which test cases are required which are not make sure you definitely take out those cases like you know which either uh, is not applicable or probably is low in risk you only want to focus on the which one is the high risk area and then finally once you finish go through all the checklists you want to document the result with the severity now there is a really good checklist available uh, also a guide i would say uh, so this OWASP guide is is very de well in detail it, it gives you the example on what the authentication i think even if you are not looking to uh, do like you know code review or anything uh, just just read through the guide i think it's huge but even if you read like you know uh, one section like let's say you take one component authentication one area and you just read through it the example it's it's going to be immensely helpful not just for the security but also when you're if you're a software developer and you're writing the code uh, that's where also it's going to be very useful so i think yeah that's about it i think i covered everything that i could think of uh, what you need in order to get started for the code review guide if you have any other uh, suggestions or like you know uh, please drop it down in the comment everyone would love to learn even i i would like to learn as well if you haven't li uh, hit the like button yet uh, please do it this is uh, like you know free content for you guys um, also do let me know what other content what other ideas uh, that like topics you want to see in the future episodes so i can i can build my content accordingly uh and as well uh, any other questions feel free to drop it in the comment as well uh thank you all i'll see you guys next week bye